Hi everybody, this is Chef Mike Benninger, owner of ChefMike.ca here in Burlington, Ontario. One of the most common questions I'm asked whenever I'm at a client's is knives. What kind do I use? What do I need? And they always wonder, you know, Chef, what, what should I have around the house to actually work? So, I thought today I'd spend a few minutes talking to you about knives, what you need, what you want, but what you should really have. First things first, every chef's knife should have a chef's knife. Eight inches long, solid blade, all the way through from tip to handle, never, ever in the dishwasher. Nice and solid chef's knife. Next, paring knife. Basically, smaller version of a chef's knife. Three or four inch blade, slightly more flexible, but basically a scaled down version. Serrated knife. These come in anywhere, shapes or sizes, from 20 bucks to $200. This one here is, believe it or not, one of those ones you see on late night TV. It was given to me as a gift. It's actually the best bread knife I've ever had in my life. Steak knives. Six, eight, 10, 12, depends on how many friends you have. That's what you need to have in the average house. A chef's knife, a paring knife, a bread knife, and some steak knives. Okay, so now we've discovered all the needs. Now let's talk about wants. What you maybe you might want to have around the house. This is a boning knife. Notice the angle of the blade goes up to a very, very fine point, kind of flexible. This is useful for taking the bone out of, say, pork shoulders or legs uh, of lamb apart. Uh, probably $25, limited use. Most paring knives will do a very, very similar job, but this does a slightly better job of it. 25 bucks, do you need it? No, that's up to you. This is a carver. This is for carving roasts and turkeys and such things table side. Very, very elegant presentation, very, very formal. This was a gift. I would never have bought this. My chef's knife will do just as good a job, but this looks kind of neat. Again, now you can buy this for about $40. Extremely sharp, flexible blade. Uh, is it worth having? Nah, it's completely up to you. Cleaver. Now, as you probably know, I used to live in Australia where this was a very common tool. This was a Joyce Chen model, very, very elegant in its construction, very heavy, very durable, blade runs all the way through, uh, wooden handles, teak actually. This was about 30 bucks. I bought this for a story going a business. I probably didn't need it, but it was kind of neat. I have it, most chefs at home don't need to have it. I have a Santuco as well. This was a gift from a friend of mine. I did some work at a trade show for him. This one here could be a substitute for the chef's knife. In my case, I do a lot of lessons, so I have extra cutting boards, extra knives for people to help me or actually do lessons or my wife to help me during uh, busy prep periods. Is this a superior product to the chef's knife? Don't know. You need one or the other, not necessarily both. What you do need though, knife guards. Blocks are lovely, guards are better. Clip these in, never, ever gets dirty, never ever hits on the blade, never cuts the owner. I've got some terrible nicks from reaching into drawers before I learned some lessons. The guards are about five or six dollars each, worth their weight in gold. Knife sharpener. This is a draw sharpener. You put the knife down and you draw the blade back and forth. There's an angle on the top here. You draw that back and forth like that, four or five times, wash the blade off. It's as sharp as you'll ever get. If you're one of those guys that has the sharpening steel, you know that thing that you fling around the air and hit your blade on? Those are extremely difficult to use, and they're more likely in the hands of an amateur to damage your blades more than actually sharpen them. This is $35. This works every single time. I wouldn't touch a sharpening steel. So now it's time to buy a chef's knife. What do you want to look for? Well, four things I like to look for. Number one, size first. From here to here, on me is eight inches. That's lots big enough for the vast majority of individuals out there. Most chefs don't have knives bigger than that. Buying something bigger is a waste of time and money. Number two is construction. I like mine to have a tip to end on a single solid piece. That's my personal preference. I like my blades forged like that. It's kind of what I like. Notice how the grip itself is in part of the blade through these rivets. That's what I kind of like. Next, the bolster. The bolster means my blade has been forged. I find those blades to be more solid, to be a little bit stronger, hold their edge a little bit better, and generally speaking have better quality steel. It does make it a little more challenging to sharpen this last little bit right here, but that's kind of the trade-off. 
as well, look at the name that's attached to it. I'm not a big brand guy. I'm not married to brands. But what I do know is a lot of these guys have been making blades and knives, in a lot of cases, swords, since the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. They've got 500 years of experience. They're very, very good at it. Next is the balance. Pick it up in your hand. Hold it just like this, with three fingers and a blade, and let go and see what happens. Does the tip fall down? Does it fall back this way? No. In my case, this is a very well-balanced blade. Fits my hand the right size and won't actually overload my wrist after a long day of chopping and cutting. Something else to consider. Grip size. I have very large hands. Most chefs tend to have larger hands, at least the men do. The grip size should fit your hand itself. You should not have to squeeze your hand too much to get around it. Cheaper knives have smaller grips and they're plastic grips. I like molded grips that are shaped and a little bigger. If your knife grip does not fit your hand, walk away. Well, that's the chef's mind primer on buying a chef's knife. Remember, this is a long-term investment. You're going to have this thing for 20 or 30 years. So don't scrip and try to save $10 on it. It's not worth doing. Over the course of many years, you'll make up for it. Talk to your friends. Read reviews. Go to lots of stores. Talk to lots of salespeople. You don't have to buy anything. Just go look and see and get what's right for you. But remember, you need one good chef's knife, one good paring knife, one good bread knife or serrated knife, and some steak knives. That's really what you need. What you want maybe something different, but that's really what you need. I'm Chef Mike Benninger from Time Management here in Burlington, Ontario. Have a great day.